Hello everyone, so this video is going to be a little bit different from my usual uh, videos. It's obviously not a uh, speed modeling video, it's more of a tutorial. So, and it's also going to be a little bit different because it's not just going to be me, but I'm actually collaborating with uh, JNM. So, if you don't know him, he has a really awesome YouTube channel. Uh, so, basically, JNM is a indie game dev, uh, he's been doing work as an indie dev for years now. He has a lot of experience with uh, Blender especially. He's, if you check out his channel, he's going to show you a lot about uh, how to do things in Blender, uh, tips, tricks, uh, and just overall awesome information that you want to learn if you're learning, learning uh, how to use Blender. And not just that, but he also has a lot of uh, tutorials on, uh, on Real 4. Uh, he has tutorials on Unity. and not only focuses on art stuff, but he also goes over more of the technical aspects of things. So he goes over uh, coding as well. So yeah, so check out his channel. He's going to be taking the model that I make during this video and he's going to import it into either Unreal or Unity. And he's going to show you how to set up the, uh, how to import and set up the model, how to set up the material and how to set up the animated model. Because in this video, I'm also going to show how to um, rig and animate a pretty simple prop but he's going to show you how to take that and set it up in a game engine so anyway yeah go ahead and check out jnm's channel uh he has some pretty awesome stuff and uh so yeah let's go ahead and get started with our with our model so okay so first things first i'm going to create the model um so i'm going to play the video at uh, somewhat speed modeling style but that's mostly mostly because the model itself is going to be really simple really geometric so i i don't think you guys need me to explain every single step of modeling this uh majority of people who are watching this channel i know are already experienced uh in the modeling process itself and usually need more help with the uh, sculpting and uh bake settings in substance painter as well as, uh, and I'll, I'm sure you'll probably be interested in also learning how to um, set up the model and rig it and animate it as well. So, so here what I'm doing is mostly creating simple shapes and doing some extrusions. Usually what I do is I use the most um, simple tools, I guess, if that makes sense, like extrude, uh, multi-cut tool to insert edge loops and stuff. Um, but I don't try to keep it complicated. I usually just extrude, duplicate things. So here I use the duplicate special so that whatever I do to one piece happens to the others. So this is gonna be a really simple turret model and I'm keeping I'm keeping it relatively low poly, just because I think, um, because it's going to be a stylized, so it's, it's not going to need to be high poly or anything like that. So just doing extrusions, moving things, and keeping it simple. I think you don't need to overly complicate models sometimes. Unless you're making like a film or anything, or like a really um, high detail video game or something like that. But if you're making stylized stuff, I think usually when you look at stylized models, they're, they're really simple. They're not super complicated. And the details always come from the textures. So here I'm thinking about possibly using some gears to make it rotate. So making a, a base here for the model. And for reference here, um, I was looking at some Torchlight 2 turrets that they have in that game. I think they were they were kind of cool. So I was just going to like use that as my reference. I wasn't fully going to replicate one of those. But just make one that looked similar to those. So here I just decided to lower it a little bit and change the design. Instead of having that gear at the bottom, just have a base. Okay. 
So again, just keeping it super simple. And having some gears that when they, my plan is that when I, when I have those gears rotate, uh, the turret itself is going to move from left to right, and possibly up as well. And then this is meant to be a prop uh, that's mostly static, uh, it's going to be on the ground. And it's going to animate and possibly shoot something out of it, I don't know. I'm just going to try to break up the shape a little bit so the base is not just a square. Just trying a few things. And I'm just adding a plane just to see what's what's gonna be above the ground. And then for this piece I just want to clean it up a little bit so that it makes more sense. And then I'm just using the merge vertex tool, I mean the weld tool. Then I think I was relatively happy here with the design. And I'm just gonna make an extra piece here for the for the back of the turret. And again, just super simple shapes. It's nothing complex about the model itself. So I think at this point the model is pretty much ready. Uh, it's ready for UV. -ing. So what I do is usually I just apply a planar map to the entire thing, and then I uh, cut some of the edges and use the unfold tool, and then that gives me a bunch of pieces. Here for this piece, I decided to use a cylindrical map instead, and then just kind of clean it up a little bit by moving some of the uh, UVs. I also like to keep some of the UVs straight, as straight as possible, so that it's not... Because when you have weird shapes, it, usually those shapes take a lot of space in your UV. I also use the layout too, just to get an initial layout. So here I'm using the same technique, I did a planar map, and then I just cut some edges. Then use the unfold tool, then that's what I get. Same technique, I'm using the same technique for every piece basically. Now for this one I'm going to cut it in the middle, then I'm going to mirror it so that I'm using less UV space. Same with this piece. Uh, Planar map, cut pieces, and then just unfold. Using the same technique, I'm not changing anything. I'm just using the same, same tools. Then I'm gonna cut that in, in half. Because some parts are just going to be symmetrical, and if they're going to be symmetrical, then they might as well only use half of the UV space. And then here for these pieces, I'm just going to use one and then duplicate it. So I just need to UV one, and then everything else I'm going to duplicate later. And then here, same technique, uh, plane the map for everything first, and then cut edges, and then unfold. And then lay up finally. Also, I always delete the geo that's not going to be visible. Yeah, 
again same technique just cutting edges unfolding and layout then this one gave me a little bit of a weird uh, piece but I, I think I'm okay with it then usually I select everything and use the layout tool and then what I do is I just by hand basically decide to also here I'm uh, setting those pieces to the side because I'm going to make those smaller because those are going to be yeah, like inside the ground so they're not going to be visible and then they're not going to need you know that's why I scaled them down because they're not going to need high resolution anyway because they don't need to so basically what I do is I just play uh, I just play Tetris here and then just place everything close because when I use the layout tool for Maya it gives me a good start but it's usually not, not the best layout so I just have to go through the whole thing and then just place them by hand just to make sure I use uh, the space more appropriately and I'm not wasting too much space and there's always like an area here and there that's kind of wasted but anyway that always happens anyways but I try to get that not get too much of that so after that I just scale it back and use the entire quadrant and then what I do is I mirror back my pieces and I merge the center by merge vertices oh and here what I'm doing is um, going through and setting my uh, normals correctly so by normals correctly what I mean is um, make sure that where you have uh, UV cuts, your edges are hard, and then where you don't have that, your edges are smooth. Then I'm also renaming everything, so everything with an underscore low. And what that's going to do is, um, it's going to make sure that the that I can bake by name when I get to Substance Painter, and you'll see what I mean by then. And then what I do is I duplicate that folder with the low stuff and then I make a high so I named everything uh, from low to underscore high so that this is going to be my high poly and I'm adding just extra details in Maya just because I don't want to add them in ZBrush I'm just, I'm just going to do it in Maya anyway and uh, so it's mostly just pebbles and adding extra edge loops to keep it so that your geometry holds up once you get it to ZBrush so it's just making the high poly version as long as you keep the same pieces with the same names uh, that's super important because once we get to substance painter you have to make sure that the names match so between your low poly and your high poly so the same pieces have the same name but there's the high poly is going to have underscore high and then the low poly is going to have underscore low so what I'm working on right now is just a duplicate of the low poly and this is my high poly mostly just doing uh, bevels and adding extra geo setting it up correctly for ZBrush and obviously I don't want to change the the topology too much because if you do that you might get some uh, artifacts in Substance Painter once you get to baking your normal map and other maps so I reminded that once we're done with our model make sure you once you're done with this tutorial make sure you follow Jainan and uh, his channel he's gonna have a follow-up video on how to import and set it up into a game engine I think that's super important information especially for people who are interested in making game models it's always important that you know how to set that up in the in a game engine like Unreal or Unity So yeah, it's mostly just adding details here and bevels and a few edge loops just so that the shape holds up 
and so that the resolution uh, across the whole model is uh, consistent. And then once I'm done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export the group. So and I'm going to export it as uh, to it on the score high and choose FBX when you export. And then we're going to import it into ZBrush as an FBX as well. Don't use OBJ because if you use an OBJ format, your model is not going to be saved as a separate pieces. It's going to be a one. So make sure you do that when you export. So I'm almost done here. Okay, so in ZBrush, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import my model. So because I exported with FBX, uh, with the FBX file type, I'm going to use the C plugin and use the FBX export import. And then just click on import. And that basically imported my models. And as you can see here under the sub tool, it imported them as separate objects with the same names that I assigned to them in Maya. So that's why I imported as an FBX. If you just hit the import button, it's uh, here under tools. That's just for uh, OBJ files and you don't want to do that if you want to keep your uh, model separate. So after that, obviously I just drag this in. And I usually prefer to change the material, maybe the, mm, let's see, I like this one, the white clay. So let's use that one. So obviously now I can just start doing the uh, sculpting. Probably not going to add too many details to this, maybe I just dent it up a little bit. So let's start with the, let's see, that piece. Probably disable uh, smooth for the first divide and then enable the back just so that it keeps the shape a little bit better. Uh, I think I'll set it to one million. And uh, the nice thing with uh, bringing in your pieces as separate models is that you can click on the solo button and then you can um, pretty much just see it isolated like this. So I'm going to use the, uh, I'm going to press the B key and use the property trim, dy trim dynamic. Just dent it up a little bit. Just give it a little bit of variation here. This is like a metal, I'm going to pretend this is made of metal, so maybe it's just like a hammer type of metal.
I also like to use a different brush, one of the old uh, from the old brushes, the old flatten edge. And you can download this from the uh, you just Google it or brush pack and then you should find it and you should be able to download those. It's basically a trim dynamic but more strong. It's really nice especially for like uh, sculpting metal surfaces and stone as well. This is gonna be a stylized uh, finish, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go too crazy with the uh, sculpting. I'm not going to pay too much attention to the bottom, just because, I don't know, may, we may not see it too much anyway. I wonder what it would look like with like a we maybe did like a panels or something on it. Oops. So let's see. So I'm masking that to get the shape of the panels that I want. Uh, let's see.
and then I'm going to use the let's see the formation and I'll try the inflate balloon first and do maybe point three or so just to see what I get. Maybe I can use can you do more than that? Maybe point seven. I'll do more than that. Let's do one point um, three. Yeah, I think that looks nicer. Maybe we could potentially do more than that. Then I could do something like this on the edges. Well, we still have it masked. Maybe our sculpt can follow the shape of the panel to make it look like it's like a separate piece or so. You know, it's just the way of making panels. Or you could just model those in Maya. If you made them, if you model them, it would probably be cleaner because then you have to really. Uh, subdivide your model here in ZBrush to get nice details or so that it doesn't look pixelated. Mine looks a little bit pixelated here if I get close to it. But I guess it's up to you. Okay, I should probably speed this up a little bit more. So, I think you get the idea how I'm making this. Okay, let's see. Let's see what it looks like without. Okay. Well, let's try. We go to st the standard brush. Drag selection, mm, do that. I'm increase the intensity. Maybe that's too small. Or maybe I go backwards first and then like this. Mm, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Added in some places here. I should probably divide this model more so it's not pixelated, but I think it's fine. Maybe if I switch to this one, it's a little more rounder. And I can maybe just model these with Maya and bring it as part of your high poly. Or you could also use the insert tool.
Okay. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Let's uh, let's call that first piece done. Uh, let's focus on this dude. Let's see. Let's go to geo divided. That should be fine. I'm not gonna do much to this. Let me just tent it up a little bit. And that should be it. Okay, let's leave it that way. And call that one done for now. Let's do this piece. Let's divide it. Uh, this one, I the UVs in my or mirror, so we want to make sure we're using symmetry here. So if you press X, you enable symmetry. Uh, this is the wrong symmetry, it's not correct. So if I go to transform, this is the C axis. And this is totally off. So I'm gonna click here on uh, local symmetry. So that should fix that. And now whatever I do to one side happens to the other side as well. Suddenly a few dents to the edges. That'll, that'll be about it of this piece. So, so I can go up here. Oops. Okay, I'll leave that one as is. This doesn't really need too much, I don't think. Let's do the piece at the bottom. And I think this one was also mirror. Let me double check. Can't remember. Yeah, I think it was mirror on the same axis. Uh, yes. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to press X to enable mirroring, change this to the C axis, okay, so now I divide it, let's try 500,000, let's see if that's, maybe that might be too much, I mean not enough. See, I think that's good. I'm getting the expected results. Just add a few dents to the edges. This piece I should probably have made separate so it was to make it easier to um, 
sculpt I'm gonna use the uh, this is another one of the orb brushes it's the orb extreme polish which is basically like a smooth brush it's nice for adding details to flat surfaces so that you can do stuff like this on a flat surface. Just to add extra noise in there so that it's not completely flat. So sometimes it just looks kind of weird when you have something that's way too flat with no detail at all. And also when you uh, texture it in Substance Painter, you don't have enough there to, you don't have enough details there to bake like uh, curvature and stuff like that or AO. But then I'm switching to the uh, Extreme Polish brush just to kind of clean it up a little bit more. And this is like not too much detail, but it's just a little bit. And you could potentially add these details in soft and spanner to a material. But I I don't have a problem doing it here. So I sometimes I do it here. Okay, we may have to cool this piece down too. Maybe we can add a few. Let's see, go back to the standard brush. Notice how I'm not even using that many brushes, just using a few. We do that. Yeah, that looks kind of cool, I guess. A little blurry, pixelated, but eh. eh. I think that's fine. Let's see, I don't know if I should add it to each one of these. Or if I should skip one. Mm, I think each one is fine. Okay. Maybe the bottom too. I don't know. Maybe that one I just do. Mm. Okay, I guess that's fine. Let's see, I'm going to use Oh, I'm going to use the uh, another one of the orb brushes, the orb crack. Super useful, and just to make it look more like a knob like that. It's super pixelated. I should probably increase my resolution. Okay, let's call that piece done. Let's do this one. I think this one I'm just gonna divide it and use the trim dynamic a little bit on it on the edges like that. I might probably get some seams when I bake 
the substance in substance of pain just because maybe this is a little bit extreme um, as far as changing the shape and I'm not really going to retopple this I'm going to use the low poly that I made in Maya and import it but sometimes you don't want to change too much with the shape I think that should be good maybe we should make, add the uh, more details with the polish one add detail to flat surfaces like that and then I switch to extreme flatten it's probably hard to see I don't know if you guys can see that hopefully it's noticeable enough and it translates when I bake probably not too much let's do it on this side too By the way, I'm making I'm doing this as quickly as I can here, just because I don't want to spend too much time. But if I was making this for reals, I would spend a little bit more time. And by for reals, I mean like if I was making this for a portfolio piece or something, I would really make sure that this looks good and stuff. But I'm mostly kind of rushing this. Well, not rushing it, but not spending as much time as I would if I was making this for a portfolio piece or a legit game I guess okay and it's and I kind of don't like these pieces too much I think they came out looking good especially this one doesn't make too much sense so I'm just gonna do that probably oh, by the way if anyone's wondering where I got the idea for this model I was looking at some of the uh, props in Torchlight, Torchlight 2, and this one's it's super similar to one of the some of the props in there. So in case this is looking somewhat familiar, that's where I got this from. Oops, I have to divide that. Usually, by the way, I'm, I'm always looking at my total uh, polycam here. Right now it's a f almost 5 million. When it gets past um, 8 million, um, my computer just starts to go a little slow, so I try not to go past that. And if I absolutely have to, what I do is uh, I sculpt the stuff one by one. And then once I get past the 8 million mark, I go back to some of the other pieces and I reduce the... Uh, I use Decimation Master to reduce the, the poly count in the scene so that my... And maybe it's just my computer's kind of slow sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I do that. In case anyone's wondering... You can say when anyone was wondering of a good way to go about making super high poly models that's kind of how I do it after the 8 million mark I should probably let's see ah, looks bad And also when I export to a Substance Painter, 
maybe this is also one of those things that is maybe it's just my computer but I try to export uh, models that, that are less than 5 million so I still do that decimation um, props to get my my total count to less than 5 to import to Substance Painter just because if I import at a higher resolution than that it just takes forever to bake my normal maps and AO especially so the lower you probably count the faster uh, Substance Painter takes to bake so I'd recommend you decimate your models before you export to Substance Painter and you don't have to destroy your um, your original scene, you can just save it as a separate copy in ZBrush and use that and decimate everything in there and then just export that. It takes more time but I think I think that's probably what most people do anyway. So maybe I'm just pointing out the obvious. And also, if anyone's wondering, yes, I'm using a tablet and a pen. I sometimes get people get people uh, asking me if I'm using a tablet and a pen. And I, for sculpting, I think you absolutely need it. I got known people who use the mouse to sculpt and they get good results. But at the end of the day, I don't know. I guess if you're into that, sure. But eventually, you're gonna need a tablet anyways. And you, you don't even have to buy the expensive ones, you can buy cheap ones. Like I'm using a really cheap one. I'm using one of the Wacom uh, bamboo ones, which I think it was like 50 bucks. So you don't have to spend, you don't have to spend too much for a good tablet. By the way, for you ever uh, do stuff like this where you're um, doing this and then it's affecting the other side, what you do is basically you just go to brush auto masking and just check back face mask. So that way if I do this again, it doesn't do anything on the other side. Is that even in the middle? Oops. Take this in the middle. Super uh, pixelated and stuff. Doesn't look good. But that part, it's, I don't know, it's going a little bit underground, so. That's fine. It's fine for what it is, I guess. I wouldn't say it. I wouldn't recommend to, do, to keep it this way. So, do as I say, not as I do. I think it looks fine from far away. Uh, I think this is the last piece. Oh wait, no. This right here. This is not gonna need much other than subdividing it. Oh, this was... Uh, symmetrical. That, that, I'm not gonna call that done, basically. Okay, so, last piece. You can see that it removes some of that, just because there weren't, there weren't any supporting edge loops down there. Um, Oh, what the heck, let's do that. I recommend you add a match loop down there before you import. Okay. Uh, what am I doing with this? Oh, panels maybe? Let's see. Let's do...
this this thing should line up with that. It doesn't line up right now. So maybe if I change the panel, pretend it's going this way instead. Uh, this is probably not gonna make too much sense. So these are panels. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did uh, on the other piece. The formation. Let's try one. What's that look like? Okay, I guess it's not too bad. Try more than one. Let's try 1.5. Okay. And now I'm going to. Oh, let's use the uh, extreme polish. Again, I use this one to add details to flat surfaces. Because sometimes it just. With other brushes, it can be a little hard to add details. And then I use the or flatten extreme. Again, you can download these brushes if you just Google it or brush. I think it's Michael Vicente who made this. Yes, he works at Blizzard, I believe, on uh, Heroes of the Storm. The guy is super good. I should probably had a have done like a Q and A for this video so that as I have scoped, I probably answer questions. Um, so anyway, this is usually the process that I do that I use for sculpting models, especially stylized stuff. It's I make stuff separately in Maya and I sculpt in ZBrush. Sometimes I change the shapes a lot and then just I just decimate. I know people who can model completely within ZBrush. Uh, that's not something that I have too much experience with, but um Definitely something I'm gonna look into. Let's see, we're almost done here. Okay, so I don't know if I should have scratches like this. Maybe. I mean, it is metal, so maybe it has a few scratches here and there.
maybe even this one has a few scratches. I try not to add them everywhere because then it just loses the the appeal of having those. Okay, so we are officially done here in ZBrush. You can always take it further, of course, and make it better than this. So, as I said before, mine, I got almost to the 8 million mark, um, but before I export to Painter, I would prefer to lower that to maybe like 4 million, just so it takes less time to bake. So, actually, let me save this first. So it's done saving. So what I'm going to do to reduce the poly count, I'm going to the C plugin and I'm going to the decimation master. Let me click here to open it on the side. So here we are and I'm going to go one by one and click on pre-process. You can do pre-process all, but it just takes longer. So I'm just going to do it one by one and uh, yeah, I'm going to pause the video actually, and because this usually takes a while. So I'm going to pre-process each one, and then I'll come back once uh, once that's done. Okay, so we are back. So I did the pre-process all. So now I should be able to decimate each one. So I'm on this one right now, which is up 1.6 mil. Uh, I think 20% is decimate current. And I'm always looking at the model just to make sure it doesn't lose any detail. Because if you go too low, then it just, just loses way too much detail. So now it's at 300, which I think is fine. I'll reduce this one. I'll just do the default, which is 20%, and just decimate current. I think that looks fine. This piece looks good. This one doesn't make current. So essentially, I'm just going to decimate all of these. By the way, when you decimate it, it changes your. Uh, let's click on this one again changes your geo so it's uh, you know it looks different so it basically it's keeping more geo in the more detailed areas so it's always good to decimate before you export just because it's it's going to take way less time for Substance Painter to bake. I think I got all the pieces. Good, so now I stand at 1 million, 1 1.5, and that should be good, I think, to export. So when you export, you don't want to use the export that's under tool. You want to use the C plugin from the C plugin menu and use the same import export FPX that you use to import. And what I do is I I think these are the defaults, which is visible, normals, and just export. And that's gonna make that's gonna keep all your high poly models as separate pieces with the correct naming. So that's why I do that. So let's see how long it takes to export. So the nice thing about uh, decimating the models too is that when you export, it's going to take less time too. So if, if it's really high poly, it's going to take a while. Obviously, it depends on your computer. 
but I'm using a laptop, so that always helps. Okay, so that's done. Sweet. I'm gonna go back to Maya and export my low poly because I haven't exported it. So again, make sure in Maya to set your smoothing groups correctly. So basically where you have hard edges, I mean, where you have UV cuts, you want to have hard edges. So here I'm just playing my, I click here to enable my hard edge visibility. So the thick ones here should be hardened edges and then everything else should be a soften edge. And in Maya 2018, I'm using 2016 right now, but in 2018 under the mesh display, there's a normal hardened soften. And if you click that, that's gonna do it for you. So I'm going to export my low poly and I'll see you in Substance Painter. Okay, so we are in Substance Painter here. So I'm going to File and I'm going to click New. Uh, set your and choose your low poly. Okay, so here's my low. Also, make sure in Maya you only had one material assigned to everything. In my case, everything was using Lambert one. So under Texture set settings, you want to click where it says Bake Mesh Maps. And here what I do is I deselect all these and start with my normal map and wall space normal. I'm going to set this to 1024 and I'm going to, under high definition meshes, I'm going to click here and add my high poly, which I exported from ZBrush. And I'm going to keep the max and rear distances as defaults, which is 0 0.01. And I'm going to set my anti-aliasing to four by four and under match, this is the important part and the reason why we name things, we, why we made things separate separate pieces and we named them underscore low for our low poly and underscore high for our high poly. And which is, we want to bake by mesh name. If we did not name our things correctly, this is not going to work by the way. So you got to make sure that you set that correctly. And I'm going to click bake. Okay, so... As we can see here, we baked our high poly details onto our low poly. And because we baked by mesh name, our pieces don't really intercept. What I mean by that is that if you if you don't bake by mesh name, this area for example would have looked a lot worse. Would have looked like uh, parts of this piece were being baked into this. But because we did by mesh name, everything is perfectly fine. And you'll see that results. If you want to test for yourself, you can just deselect the by, net, by mesh name under the bake settings and you'll see what I mean by that. So I think this looks fine. So after I confirmed that my normal map and wall space normal look good, what I do is I go ahead and bake the other maps. In this case, a curvature is usually the one that takes the least. I like to um, uh, disable these settings and I lower my details as well. For position and thickness, I think on the thickness you also have to click on only same uh, mesh name. So I'll do these three now. I'm leaving the ambient occlusion for last because it usually takes the longest. Okay, so I'm going to pause this and come back to you once it's ready.
Okay, so now we are ready to animate and rig our model. So back in Maya, what I did was I merged everything into one model and I applied our material, well, texture through our Lambert. And then under color, I added the uh, texture that we exported from Substance Painter. So first things I'm going to do is I'm going to break my, detach my edges here Touch components just because I want this to be separate because I want to be able to move this part from left to right and if I don't detach that I won't be able to uh, smoothly do that so I'm going to add a new uh, display layer here name it mesh save it and I'm going to add my model to it so right click add selected so as you can see now I can change the visibility of it I'm also going to delete all by type history. So we are ready to start creating our joints. So on the rigging, so switch to rigging, go to skeleton, create joint, click anywhere, press enter, and set this back to zero. Um, also set this radius to one. And if you want to change the size of the displayed uh, joints, go to display, animation, joint size. I set mine to 30. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press Ctrl D and duplicate it. Also, I want to be able to see through the uh, mesh. So under shading, x-ray, joints. I'm going to hold down V and snap it to uh, this edge. I'm going to press Ctrl D and Ctrl v, I mean, and just hold down V to snap it here. And now I'll hold down X. Snap to the grid in the middle. And now I'm going to control D and snap to our gear here. We'll move it in a little bit too. Control D, control, I mean, hold on V and now move this in to snap. Now, as you can see, we have our joints that we're going to use. So this one at the bottom is going to be our main joint. So I'm going to name that main J for main joint. This is going to be our turret um, O1J. This one at the top is going to be our turret O2J. This one's going to be our gear O1J for joint. And then this one's going to be our gear 2. And now I want to parent our joints to our main uh, joint here. So I'm going to click this one, hold down shift, click that, uh, press P to parent. Now this one and this one, press P, this one and this one, P, and the same with this. So now our parent controls all the rest of the joints. So that's that. So now what I want to do is create controllers. So basically when you animate a model, you don't want to be animating the joints themselves. You want to animate using controllers. So go to create NURBS uh, circle. This is going to be our main, our main control that controls the, uh, the joint at the bottom. Control D and, con and hold on V and snap it to this one. Oops. Then control D and snap to this one right here probably going to rotate this one and then control D and then snap here I'll rotate it too control D and snap with the V key so this is going to be our gear this is going to be our small gear okay so now that we have that we have to name this so this is going to be controlling our main joint. So it should be called something probably like main control. Uh, this is our turret one. So this should be our turret one control. And this should be turret control two. Then this one's gear one. And it should be controlling, should be controlled by this one. 
and this one should be gear 2 controller and you have to make sure that you freeze transformation on your controller so modify freeze transform so there should be no transformations here and I'm going to place all the controllers inside the main one so the main controller controls everything I also want to have turret 2 controller be under turret 1 so that when I move turret 1 turret 2 comes with it okay and now I want to create a connection between the controllers and the joints so let's start with our main controller so click the main controller hold down shift click on the main joint I uh, go to constraint pairing uh, options box and make sure your settings are set like this and just apply now I'm going to click this one, hold on shift on that, apply this and this, do the same. Then this one and this one. And then the gear. So now our joint our controller should be controlling our joints. Make sure you test it to make sure this is working. Okay, so that's good. So now we are ready to skin our joints to our mesh. So click on all the joints and uh, then the mesh. Hold down control, click on the mesh. And then go to skin, bind, skin options box. Use these settings, which I think are the default. So now if you click on one of the controllers and move it, you can see that it's influencing our model. Obviously this is not the way we want it to be, but... So now what we want to do is skin this correctly. So I'm going to start with the bottom, with the parts that not, don't move and should be controlled by the main controller. So select those faces and then hold down control, go to vertices, and then open skin, uh, paint skin weights, options box, this is going to be opening this. If you click on our main joint, what we want to do is we want to click on flat. And as you can see now, it's completely white, which means that our main joint is fully controlling these uh, uh, those pieces. And then you can also see that it has some, um, some uh, influence over some of these pieces here, but that's going to change once we start fixing it. So let's do, this is gear one, I believe open that so gear one plot let's do the same with gear two gear two and then let's plot that then the turret so that's turret one and then finally the last pieces Make sure you don't miss anything. So that's two at two. Okay, so as you can see now, if I cycle through these, you know, gear one fully controlled gear one, but it does doesn't have any influence over anything else. So everything that's black it means it has no influence over that. So press Q and exit that. And as you can see now, if I move our joint, it controls exactly what I wanted to control and then this one controls this piece and then this controls the gears I don't want to see the joints because I'm not going to be animating those so hide those because you always want to be animating your controllers so basically our model is ready now for animating it's completely rigged and uh, you don't even need to be able to select the model So we can start to animate it. So first things, I'm going to select all the joints and go to frames one here. I'm going to press S, and as you can see, it's a uh, highlights red, which means that's a keyframe. I'm going to keep this as a really simple animation. Um, I'm just going to make it rotate a little bit. So let's go to maybe I don't know frame twenty and have it move oops that way 
by 45 but let's see how far can we move it this way oh okay that's fine okay so i've been moved by negative 45 so i'm gonna press s on that and then let's see or maybe one two let's see I'm going to switch my axis orientation to object and then maybe I want to move this one up by 15 or so I'm going to press S on that actually I'm going to press S on everything so if I play this you see that it goes up like that and maybe that happens because the gears moved so let's move the gears by oops what's going on here okay so maybe the gears move by 90 so S on that and this one moved by 90 as well let's see how that looks again I'm, I'm not claiming to be an expert in animation and you can click the play button that was super quick so probably select them all and then Cut this and then paste it under, let's see, 40. It's here. I think on the playback, playback speed, I think this should be set to real time, I believe. If that's true or not. Okay, yeah. It's actually super slow now that I look at it. I'm gonna cut this and maybe set it to frame 30. See how that looks. Okay. So maybe it moves like that and then. And then by frame 60, it moves back. This time by negative 45 to the other side. Maybe this guy falls back down. And then these pieces keep going to 180. Oh, so I think I'm doing that the wrong way. See, so it should be going this way. Then this one. Okay, so I'm gonna press S. Let's see what that looks like. Again, I'm not claiming to be an expert in animating. Eh, that, that doesn't look too terrible. Obviously, our gears seem to be. But this is probably part of uh, uh, modeling wrong. As you can see here, the gears like intercept at one point. They don't even seem to be working correctly. Let's see, frame 30. I wonder if maybe this gear should go slower or faster actually. Let's see. Let's try that. Maybe this one goes this speed. Yeah, that actually looks better now. Like it doesn't intercept too much. So if I play that, let's see. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, and then when we get to here. Oops. It's moving slower, so I'm gonna do 360 on it. Yeah, I think the smaller one has to move faster than the, than the large one so that it doesn't intercept. Let's see. That's kind of, 
kind of neat. Actually, let's see. Maybe when it gets to here, let's see. Hmm. I'm going to cut this so that it's in memory and then I can paste it later. But let's see, maybe when it gets to here, it kind of like bumps a little bit. So, like, bumps like this. And then he goes back. And then here. Oops. I don't disable my snapping. Actually, no. I'm not. See what that looks like. Well, that's, that's a lot. Let's see, I'm going to delete that one. So this is a forty five, and then it goes to a 41, then it goes back to 45. See what that looks like. I don't know, that's maybe it has to fa happen faster. Then I paste back that one that I cut. Let's see. Let's play that. Oh, I notice this is not rotating anymore. These are not rotating anymore. So I think I set this one to. 360 Wait a second Okay Then this one should have come all the way here And then this I think it went to 180 Select them all Okay Um Then maybe finally it goes back to its original spot. So this goes back to zero. This goes back to zero. And then S that. Oh, whoops. So the gears are at I don't know if you will be able to loop this. I don't think so. so. This one has to be back at 360 to be back to its starting point. And then this one's already there. Let's see if it makes, if it makes sense. So maybe if we hit set this one back to this one does a 
crazy. Seven twenty spin. I mean, it's not too bad. And maybe it starts from the from the beginning again. Okay, so let me go to window UI range lighter. So I'm going to this to like ninety. Okay, so now if I play, let's see if it actually loops in a reasonable way. Okay. Maybe it stays. I wonder if maybe when it goes from this side to this side, maybe the gear spin the other way. But I'm gonna keep my this right now. I mean, you can do that in your own time. Anyway, so yeah, that concludes basically um, the uh, modeling, sculpting, and texturing and animating of this model. Uh, so make sure you go to JNM's uh, channel because he's gonna have a video on how to set it up and import it into either Unreal or Unity. Uh, it's gonna be up to him. But anyway, yeah, make sure you go check out his channel. He's got some really awesome stuff there. Nice tutorials on not just art, but he also has a lot of technical tutorials on learning how to code as well. So yeah, go check out JNM's channel. Uh, and uh, you'll learn a lot on how to set this up in a game engine and set up the animation and importing of the model and importing all the materials and setting all that stuff up. So yeah, go ahead and go to his channel. Make sure you, if you like to see stuff, make sure you also subscribe, like his videos. So for me, this is it. Uh, if you want to check out the next part on how to set it up in Unreal or Unity, Go check out Janem's channel. Uh, it's going to be a link in the description so that you can follow him there. So yeah, thank you for watching.